Hello, my name is Ishai Karmiel. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Meaning. And today I want to talk about audio fakes, uh, which is a very, very interesting and emerging threat that is happening in the generative AI world and to cover what is going on on the state of audio deepfakes and deepfake detection. So, so basically one of the interesting things that is happening right now is that we see basically voice everywhere. So in the past 12 months, we've seen some kind of an explosion in terms of how people are interacting with the AI and specifically for voice. And GPT-4 created a new way to interact with machines. And right now, if we're thinking about it, we are seeing that a lot of interactions that have started with text are moving into voice and what we call basically voice to voice or speech to speech. Uh, basically, what does it mean? Uh, if we are thinking about it, there are two types of technologies that we need to understand, putting aside the LLM, of course, uh, when we are interacting with the AI in a voice-based interaction. So the first technology is, of course, what we call speech recognition, is that if I'm speaking something, uh, the machine or the AI needs to understand what it what I'm saying to the machine. So basically it takes my speech and convert it into some kind of a text. Of course, this text is converted uh, and injected into some kind of an LLM that knows how to interpret that. And then the outcome is coming through a technology that is called speech synthesis. And this is how and what we are hearing from the machine or from the AI. And the focus that I'm going to be is in this talk is about speech synthesis. So if we're thinking about it, like, you know, of course, the, the main application of speech synthesis is um, interacting with voice agents and with AI, but there are other um, different type of applications that we can think about that speech synthesis is interesting. So, for example, um, if you want, you know, uh, to listen to audiobooks or to media, speech synthesis is uh, can take the words and generate some kind of a, a, a speech or some kind of a voice on top of that. If we are thinking about that, we want to create applications for gaming, we can, you know, a lot of these applications are using speech to speech. And of course, one of the most interesting things is that, you know, people that are starting to lose their voice or have some kind of a speech imperative, uh, they can use speech synthesis as an assistive technology. And now I just want to go, before I'm going to talk about audio effects and voice cloning, I just want to give some kind of, you know, glimpse of what type of technologies, when we are talking about speech synthesis, what type of technologies are we thinking about and we are covering. So, so basically, there are what we call two major technologies that we are thinking about. One of them is what we call te text-to-speech. And text-to-speech is, is basically a very, very simple uh, definition of I have some kind of a text, I'm writing that, and the machine knows how to generate some kind of a speech on top of that text. So that's, that's a very, very simple thing. The second type of technology is what we call speech to speech, which I'm saying something to the machine and it takes my voice and convert that into another um, speech on the fly or sometimes in offline and it's called voice conversion. So these are the two major technologies that we are thinking about. And then, um, and you see that, you know, these type of technologies, you know, marked in blue, but then it's starting to become very interesting. And this is like what we are thinking about voice cloning. So one of the things that happen in text-to-speech is that in order to train a system, usually I needed to have some kind of a corpus of a single person that is speaking for around 10 to 20 hours, sometimes even more, to create a very, very high quality of text-to-speech. But as we can probably understand, a lot of the times we want to create different voices. So, for example, if I want to create my voice or someone in the audience voice, I don't, I don't have access or sometimes I don't have um, capabilities to record 10 or 20 hours of their voice. So in the last, I think, three or five years, there's been an emerging uh, evolution of technologies that are called zero shot. What does it mean zero shot? Is that basically I'm providing a very short sample of the speech. I'm building some kind of a, what we call a, a dedicated text-to-speech systems or dedicated voice conversion system that is called the multi-speaker TTS or multi-speaker voice conversion. And with this very, very short snippet of speech, I can basically transform the system to sound like me. Okay, so basically if you're seeing that the two type of technologies that are marked in orange, uh, one of them is called zero short text to speech when I'm providing a text plus some kind of a snippet of a speech. 
and it's create a, a voice, a text-to-speech system using the, the, tar the source speech voice. The second thing is what we call zero-shot voice conversion. We're not providing some kind of a speech of what we call the source target and a speech of what we call uh, the target, and it converted that voice. And these are the, the core technologies that are used for what we call a voice cloning. So when we are thinking about text-to-speech, basically I just you know, want to give you some kind of a very, very high overview. So again, a block diagram of a text-to-speech. So we have a text on the left, then it injected into some kind of a NLU, some kind of you know, LLM or some kind of a natural language understanding that, you know, that decomposes the text into smaller snippets uh, of, uh, of what we call speaking patterns or tokens. And, and as a result, we know how to generate you know, spectrograms or some kind of a part of speech on top of that, and then we have a vocoder. So this is like overall some kind of you know, how a text-to-speech system works. And when we are thinking about voice conversion, so a voice conversion is divided into what we call a source speaker. And the source speaker, for example, is the person that we want to convert. And then we have a target speaker, which is the person that we want the source speaker to sound like. And then we have the voice conversion. So let me just give you some kind of an example. So this is, for example, the source speaker. I've done nothing wrong, and that's the truth. And this is the target speaker. He felt there was no case to answer. And the converted voice, basically, the target speaker, the source speaker will sound like the target speaker. I've done nothing wrong, and that's the truth. So basically, as you can see, for example, the voice conversion systems knew how to take the source speaker and to sound like the a target speaker. Um, when we're thinking about the state of the art of speech synthesis systems, um, they are very good. What well, they are very good, they are very good in avatar dubbing, postcast, you know, narrating postcast. They can serve as input for voice agents, which sounds very, very realistic. And they can use a very good video, video dubbing with lip syncing. What they are still starting sometimes challenging is like to provide a very, very good low, what we call zero shot that I can need to provide a very short sample of the target speaker in order to, to generate a very, very high quality voice. And sometimes if we're talking about that, I want to generate speech that is very long, for example, in the range of like a few minutes or sometimes a, a few hours, sometimes the system starts to hallucinate. So these are the major challenges that are happening in the state of the art of speech synthesis systems. Okay, sorry. Um, now I want to cover a little bit about what we call uh, audio fakes. And what does it mean, audio fakes? So the first thing that we need to understand about audio fakes is basically what is voice cloning. Um, and basically, as I said, as TTS evolved, uh, one of the things that we wanted you know, to create are TTS that sounded like you know, different type of speakers. So uh, in the past, as I said, five years, people have created or adapted the TTS system that they can serve as getting an input, some kind of, you know, what we call speaker embedding or some kind of, you know, a source speech of someone and to adapt the system to sound uh, like, the target, like you know, the target voice that we want to sound. It has, as I said, it has a lot of good applications that, you know, for example, if I want to narrate, you know, audio books uh, in, you know, in, in a different kind of speaker, if I want, you know, to create gaming avatars, if I want to help, you know, people with, um, assistive technology, even if I want to, to create some kind of a voice agent that sounds like no specific person. But as a result, uh, if you're thinking about the malicious things that you know that people can do with that, I can clone someone's voice. So basically, if I have access to some kind of you know, text-to-speech or some kind of a voice conversion system, and if I have access to a, a person that I want to clone some kind of you know, a snippet of their voice, voice cloning is shockingly good and is getting better. And the question that people are asking is that sometimes how much time or how much data do I need to do in order to clone someone's voice today with what we call, you know, the latest and greatest technologies, for example, technologies like what we call Cozy Voice 2 or A5 TTS, I can literally do that in five seconds. 
And sometimes, you know, there are even different type of systems that I don't even, I can do language, you know, different type of languages. So I have a person that is speaking, for example, French, and I make, I can make them sound like, you know, um, sound in English. So it's even like, you know, what we call multilingual. So um, the first thing that we need to understand is that voice cloning is real, it's accessible, and the amount of attacks are happening and evolving. When we are thinking about the ana anatomy of a deepfake attacks, we can divide the anatomy into three things. First of all, a person or an attacker need to get someone's voice. So they need to find you know, different type, you know, data sources. And they can go to YouTube, they can go to social media, for example. A lot of people are posting their videos or um, information about social media. Or sometimes they can just you know, uh, call the person and just you know, you know, pretend to be someone else and just you know, get a snippet of the voice and that's it. And as I said, like, you know, they don't need a lot. They can do, like, you know, even, like, you know, five or ten seconds of their voice, so they need very, very short snippet. snippet. Um, the techniques that they are using in order, to, for example, to fool someone, they can, I, I can either generate a recording using a text-to-speech. They can either speak, and then they are using voice conversion. And recently, people are using, even being attackers are being even more and more sophisticated, and they can literally take a, create a voice agent basically a voice agent that they sound exactly like the person. One of the reasons that, for example, um, OpenAI um, uh, allegedly do not re uh, reveal their uh, voice technologies because of the, the, the malicious things that people do using voice cloning. Um, um, the third thing is, again, how they are performing the attack. They can, the attack can be through a social engineering, calling the person and pretending to be someone else. A, an automated call like a robocall or planting the audio in some kind of a deep fake video. And when we're thinking about there are different type of attacks and as, as again, as one of the things that we are seeing is that attacks are uh, being in more and more and more sophisticated. So of course, as I mentioned, the first attack is what we call TTS voice cloning. So basically I'm creating some kind of an AI generated that is mimicking a real person and using some kind of a sample is and I'm writing or um, writing writing the information that I want um, to clone or to to uh, fool people and it usually uh, using in scams and impersonation the second thing is that uh, what we call a voice conversion attack is that basically I want that the recording will sound more realistic so I'm speaking or another person is speaking and we are you know literally converting my voice or someone else's voice into the target voice um, and now the two types of attacks are like you know, becoming this, the next two types of attacks are like you know, becoming very very sophisticated and starting to be more popular. Um, one of the things that is happening is what we call editing attacks. So editing attacks is basically that I'm taking a recording or some kind of an audio snippet of a person that is real, and just planting some kind of you know a, a very very small part of that as deep fake. And um, for example. I can say I'm eating ice cream and I'm just plating uh, the knot and I'm saying I'm not eating ice cream. So just the knot is a deep fake. Everything else is real. So these type of attacks are like much harder to uh, recognize because again, that's just only one thing of there is what we call a, a deep fake one and everything else is real. And the fourth attack is what we call a creating a voice agent. One of the things that is happening and one of the challenges with what we call you know, the TTS voice cloning is that I need to predict how the conversation is being going to be held. So I'm creating some different type of recordings and we, you know, what you can, I'm creating a voice agent. The voice agent is able to interact with the person, with you know, the person that we're not, with the voice that we're trying to clone. And it's, you know, we are just, you know, creating some kind of a target or some kind of, you know, goal for the agent to do something. In terms of the current state, again, like, you know, if you're thinking about it, like, you know, we want to detect uh, deep fakes. And again, like when we are thinking about, you know, detection, there are three things that we can think about in terms of detection. The first thing is that usually, like when people are analyzing the information, what we call the acoustic and the, what we call spectrogram analysis, and spectrogram are specific, you know, information that are embedded within, you know, the speech that what we call the time domain and the speech you know, of the speech. Usually, sometimes you can identify if you know a, a voice has been generated by a machine because again, the spectrograms are like you no know, much smoother, 
and doesn't have the pattern of how a, a real voice should sound like. Again, for human for human ear, it sounds very, very natural, but when a person is looking at that or when a machine learning is looking at that, sometimes you can identify. Um, the third, the second thing is that, you know, a lot of the times you can create what we call an AI, AI power deepfake detections that are being trained on what we call, you know, fake data versus not fake data. And the third thing is that, you know, sometimes again, like we can find these behavioral cues because the intonation, how the sound, you know, sound like, or sometimes the pauses, um, they are not natural for a realistic a human conversation. And you can find and a lot of the times the detections are combining all of the three of them. In terms of limitations, it's it's like you know every type of cyber um, challenge. Like, you know, it's an arm race. Um, you know, it's a cat and mouse. Like you know, the, the attacks are becoming more sophisticated, and as a result, um, the classifiers of detections need also to be more sophisticated. And one of the challenges that you know that you no know, that you know the good guys need to think one you know one step ahead. Sometimes it's very, very challenging. The second thing is like, you know, with every cyber challenge is that uh, what we call uh, accuracy in false positive. Again, like we want to make sure that, you know, that we are notifying the person if it's like, you know, if it's a deep fake, if it's an actual deep fake. Because again, we don't want to cry wolf all the time and we want to make sure that um, uh, the detector is like, doesn't have a lot of false positive. What's the future look like in terms of you know audio deepfakes? So first of all, one of the things that is going to happen, and again we are seeing that it's that it's evolving very very fast, is that you know the voice cloning and are becoming much more accessible, and they are sounding very very realistic. The second thing that is going to happen as a result is that you know that you know detection methods are going to be a, a more sophisticated. Um, and also like, you know, more different type of authentication technologies. One of the things that is starting to become very, very popular is that instead of like, you no know, again, deep fakes are much what we call proactive methods, uh, because again, the attack has already be, you know, started. So we are starting to see a um, more reactive methods, maybe preventing from these things to happening. And of course, um, there are more regulations and like more more things that needs to be educated people to be aware that if somebody is calling you or if you are seeing something you need to be aware that there is a chance that you know these things are fake and people should be more skeptical about you know the content or the things that are happening or they are being received so thank you all for joining me